In our scripture reading for today, you get to hear the story of how the Apostle Paul was converted from a dangerous person who severely persecuted the members of the early church. You get the story to see the story of how Paul went from trying to destroy the early church to being one of the primary supporters and evangelists of the early church. The resurrected Jesus appears to Paul as he's traveling on the road to Damascus. A bright light shines around Paul, who was then named Saul. A bright light shines around him, knocking him to the ground. A voice from heaven speaks and finally leaves Paul blind and unable to eat or drink for three days. Now, there is a sense in which you could say that Saul was being an upright member of the Jewish faith. He was rigorously upholding the faith that he believed in and trying to destroy this heretical offshoot called Christianity. You could say that Saul was rigorously trying to serve God in the best way that he knew. And you could say that he was absolutely dead wrong. And so, Jesus stops him in his tracks and sets him on a completely different path, a completely different road, as it were. And Jesus gives Saul, our Paul, a completely new life, a completely new purpose in life. And Paul becomes a passion. Paul becomes as passionate a promoter of the Christian faith as anyone ever has been. In fact, Paul starts several Christian churches in different regions and cities in Europe. In fact, Several of Paul's letters to these and other churches are core writings of the Christian faith that we have in the Bible. Paul's letter to the Romans, or the church in Rome. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, or the Thessalonians. Paul's letter to the Galatians, and the Philippians, and Philemon. These are core witnesses to the faith that have been foundational theological blessings to the church throughout the centuries. And all of this came about because of this one powerful conversion experience on the road to Damascus. Throughout the history of the Jewish faith and the Christian faith, there have been several key faith leaders who have had very questionable lives prior to their becoming powerful leaders in the faith. Abraham sent his mistress Hannah and her son Ishmael out into the wilderness to die. But God saved them. The powerful prophet Moses first didn't believe in God. And then, when he found out that he, Moses, was actually Hebrew, then he killed a man for abusing Hebrew slaves. Then he was also sentenced to death in the wilderness. But God had other plans for him. King David was chosen by God to be king of Israel when he's just a boy. But as king, David stole a soldier's wife and then had the soldier killed. So there is a sense in which sometimes even the most significant historical figures of the faith first had to be significantly redirected in life, or, or at least significantly forgiven in order to become the witnesses and leaders of the faith that they eventually became. In the same way, the Apostle Paul probably 
significantly messed up some people's lives by having them arrested for their faith. He was completely misguided in the way that he was trying to serve God. And yet, God saw that Saul, or Paul, could still be very useful to the faith and the formation of the church. So, Jesus appears to Saul on the road to Damascus and forcefully redirects Saul's life and purpose. Throughout the course of the centuries, you hear stories of people's lives that have been completely redirected by Jesus. In these modern days, you can hear stories about hardened criminals in prison who are completely transformed by Jesus and become powerful witnesses of the faith. You hear of serious alcoholics and drug users who are transformed by Jesus. And sometimes, in many of these cases, the person has to experience a major trauma in their life in order to transform them into the faithful witness that they later become. Now, you know, we are used to hearing about many of these radical and very visible faith transformations that happen in people's lives. But sometimes life, or God, challenges or redirects your life and your faith without such radical, visible transformation. Sometimes you're going along just fine in life, and you get a wake-up call that reminds you how precious your everyday life really is. Sometimes you're going along just fine in life and you have a tragedy in life or a major health concern. And you just stop to remember what this life and what this faith is all about. You and I can get distracted, are lulled into a sense of complacency in life. You've got all the money that you really need to survive. You've got a good job or a good retirement. You and your children are healthy or, or at least manageably so. Your marriage is just fine. And so you're pretty sure that you've got things, you've got this, everything set and settled in life. For the moment, you've got this whole thing figured out. And yet, as much as you would like everything in life to remain fixed and stable, that is not the nature of life. Your life is always changing. Sometimes the changes are quite subtle, you get a year older. Sometimes the changes are quite dramatic. You have some major health issue or, or some major loss. Now, I would not propose that God sends these tragedies upon us. Like in the story of Paul's conversion, personally, I believe that these things are simply random events that usually hit every one of us at some point or other. But it is usually during these times of dramatic change that you experience your greatest growth in faith. It is usually during these times of dramatic change that you pause to reconsider the essence of your faith and how the presence of God is working in your life. At the end of our scripture reading for today, the newly formed Apostle Paul is about to begin a new life of faith that will significantly in influence the complete future of Christianity. The faith transformations and developments of your life 
might not change the whole future of Christianity, but your life and your faith are witnesses that sustain the hope and the faith of the people all around you in your life. Your dedication, your hope, your trust in Jesus, and your continual relationship with God are guiding lights for the people you are walking with throughout your life, each day. By your presence here today, even, you are showing that Jesus is the guiding light of your life. And may Jesus continue to strengthen you and guide you and make you a light to everyone in your path. In his holy name. <laughs>